In this section, we've talked about two different ways of trying to work out how far away something is out in space using purely geometrical methods. We've talked about using eclipsing binaries, and we've talked about mega mazes. But there are some other possible methods. They have not yet proven very useful, but maybe at some point in the future they will. One involves supernova remnants. And when a supernova explodes, it hurls out gas in all directions, and that will produce a spherical shell. Let us imagine the shell really is spherical. In practice, they're often not because the supernova fires things out differently in different directions. But let's assume that we find one that's nice and symmetrical. And let's also assume that the shell moves out at a constant speed v, which again is possibly not true. It'll depend on how much gas there is around. But if it's in a very low density region, maybe it's not too far off being true. In that case, can we work out how far away the supernova is? Well, we've got two observations. One thing we can do is measure the spectrum. So let's say we take a spectrum at the center of the supernova remnant. We will see two spikes of emission lines, one due to the gas coming towards us and one due to the gas coming away from us. And the wavelength shift here gives us the velocity. So that the velocity as a function of the speed of light equals the wavelength shift over the lab wavelength, normal Doppler effect equation. So we can work out the velocity at which the gas is expanding. The other thing we can measure is some time t after the explosion, how big the shell appears to be to us. So let's see, we've got the Earth here. And here we've got our supernova. And here's the shell. And what we're trying to measure is the angular radius, which is going to be this angle here, theta. And this is the distance d. And that's the radius of the bubble r. Now, r is just going to be the velocity times the time since the explosion. And we know the velocity here. From the small angle approximation, we also know that theta equals r over d, which will therefore be vt over d. So we can very easily rearrange and find out that the distance to the supernova is just the velocity, which we get from the Doppler effect, time since the explosion divided by the angular radius. So extremely simple. That would be a lovely method if only supernova shells really were symmetric and if they really did expand at a constant rate. Even if they don't expand at a constant rate, in principle you could do spectroscopic monitoring and keep track of how the rate changes and still work out the radius here. So it might be possible in that case.